good evening and welcome to our moment of honor. I just want to welcome each and every one of my listeners. To all my sisters, my aunties, my cousins, to all my grandmothers, to all my sister-in-laws, I welcome you today to this program. My name is Dr. PJ, and I just want to pray that my words will open up your spiritual eyes, your spiritual mind, for you to see exactly what is going on in today's world. Thank you in Jesus' name, I pray for you to receive these words of knowledge. All right, and today we're gonna to be teaching in this prophetic word, we're gonna be teaching in the woman to woman segment where the spiritual woman of God is giving advice and telling truths and facts that is happening in a day to day to basis in our social life, in our home, in our business, in the workplace, in the marriages, amongst our friends and families. The topic to today, stop playing the victim card. Stop playing the victim. Because guess what? You are not a victim. Amen? We find, for example, I'm totally gray. I'm an older woman. I've met a lot of the women, even including in my own family, that... They will go out there, they will date a no good man. They will date a single man that like have seven children, several children with different baby mamas. They will go out there and pick up a married man. And they will do things like that. Knowingly knowingly that the man is married knowingly that the man is on drugs knowingly that the man ain't no good knowingly that the man ain't got no job and then you play the victim card you play the victim card because you won't listen you play the victim card and the poor me and the this and that and the pity party and now oh it didn't work out and he is like this and no but you play the victim card but I know who you are. See, you knew that Richard wasn't right. You knew that Richard was a married man. You knew that Richard have all them children outside of his marriage. Like he's a cheater. You were warned by people in the community. He ain't no good. He ain't no good. He will get you pregnant and he will keep on walking. You was warm, but you didn't care because you, you thought you were better than his wife. You thought that when you were laying with him, that you were better than his wife and his wife wasn't nothing. His wife was a bad one and you was a good one. You better than her, you know, and that if your wife was, was doing what she was supposed to do, what are you doing here in my bed? You see, but you don't understand that you were part of it too. And that even in the word of God said, it takes two. It's both of them get the death penalty. It's both of them acquire curses. So now you realize that you broke up a marriage. So you finally got this man to break up his marriage and abandon his wife. So you thought the, you was better than the wife and everything. So guess what? As time go, went by, you find out that Richard was doing you the same way how he did his wife. So you don't broke the man marriage and scatter his children, right? You scatter the wife. 
So now you got to work an extra job and when you fight for your child support, guess what? Your child support get garnished. Even if you divorce him, your, your, your child support still getting garnished. Your child support, your, your income tax is getting garnished every year. And you've been divorced for five years, so now you're playing the victim role. Now you come into me after I told you it was wrong. I didn't only tell you it was wrong. I told your old brother who's a counselor and a psychiatrist that he needed to have a little conversation with you. But he thought you were special because you can a little bit, you know, you're average, but you thought you were so cute, but you are average girl. So because you are average girl, you thought that, okay, I can, I can go and sleep with any man. I can sleep with this man. I can sleep with that man. I can sleep with that other man. I can, I can wreck his home. I can curse, curse out his wife. I can fight. Now that the, 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 the table and everything is turned now, it's being a turnaround where Richard is showing you who he really is. Now you find out that the wife wasn't wrong at all. You, you, curse, you curse out the wife. You fight with the wife. And she got tired of everything and she said you can have him. Deal with him. Now you find yourself... Calling the wife and telling the wife what Richard is doing to you. See, what goes around come around. This is true facts that I'm talking. This is reality. You're playing the victim card. You're playing the victim card, but you didn't care. See, when you were sleeping with that married man, and you was having him come home and slap his wife, you have him come home and pull a gun on his wife. You have him come home and, 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 and reap havoc against his wife. You were laughing. You and your friends thought it was funny. Y'all thought it was funny what you was doing, all right? You thought it was funny for you to have a, a man beating his wife with your lies. You see, these type of victims, they are the victimizer. The one who play the role of a victim today, they are the victimizers. They are the one who done done a lot of dirt in their life because you was jealous. You was jealous of that woman marriage. If you so good and you so cute and you so pretty, how comes you ain't got a husband? Think about it. These type of women who run around with married men, they ain't really no good women. Because if they were that good, they would have been married a long time ago and have a husband taking care of them. But they have no husband taking care of them. Because they are victimizers. They are go around and create havoc and destroy other people's destiny. They want it coming for their time. Right? Because there's a time where you are going to get your payback. And this is payback time for you, sister. Because when you was taking that man money from him and giving him sex, and he was sitting there talking all these bad things about his wife. You were spreading it everywhere. You was laughing. You thought it was funny. To talk about another woman's husband like that. Another man's wife. You didn't care. You was having fun. And you just thought that you was better than the wife. Now, today... You are reaping the consequence of your choices that you made. You yourself made a choice 
You didn't go in the relationship blindsided. If you dating a man. And the man can't bring you to his home. To his apartment. If the man can't take you to his place. And say this is my home. See I live here alone. Look in the closet. You can ask. Let me use your bathroom please. If he don't have an outside, but go in his closet and you'll see if there's any female clothes in there. Because his wife may be at work. And then when, when the wife go to work, then he go to play. You see, he go to play when his wife is not around. So this man is used to bringing women in his house and having extramarital affairs. See, but you thought in your dreams and in your mind that you were better. You got on social media and you broadcast it. You even put pictures of you and the man online. Those pictures you send to the wife Facebook, to the wife Instagram, so the wife could know that her husband cheating on her. You didn't care anything about those young small children. You didn't care anything about her and her tears. Now, everything has turned against you now. Now you're finding out that Richard wasn't all that that what you thought he was. Now you're finding out that Richard wasn't that man that you thought he was. Now you're finding out that Richard is a cheater because guess what? The game is on you. I said the game is on you, so stop crying. The game is on you. Because you did those things. That's your payback. That's your retribution. That's your punishment. For all what you did to that woman. For all what you said to that poor woman. To all the wickedness that you did to her. You tormented her, the wife. You went after his wife. You picked on his wife. You slander his wife. You had no mercy on his wife. Therefore, it's your turn. Your turn today is to reap what you sow. Stop playing the victim card. You see, when you was going out and he was taking the money from his wife and his children, and he wasn't paying his bills. And he wasn't giving his wife any money to buy any food to eat. And he wasn't helping his wife with the car note. Yes, you was boasting. He paid my car note. I got my hair done. Um, I'm, I'm okay. I'm living the life. I'm living it up. Ain't nobody bought me. You gossip. You was trifling. You was vindictive. You was evil. You was unkind. You was rude. And you didn't care. You didn't care anything about the wife and the children. Now today, the child, your income tax going back to the wife and it's three children for child support. Now, Richard don't need that. And abandon you in that apartment with your two children that he have with you. Because you see, she made herself pregnant by this married man. She made herself pregnant by the marriage man. And after she made her set pregnant by the married man, she stopped crying. I can't have a child out of wedlock. I can't have a 
child out of wedlock. You must marry me. So what Richard did, Richard took her to the jewelry store and told her to pick out a ring. By and by, she ended up paying for that married ring to this day. Richard is gone. Richard don't move up, move down with another woman. Richard ain't looking back because Richard ain't got no remorse. Now you find yourself in the same condition that the ex-wife is in. She was in. Now you're trying to say to the ex-wife, you're picking up the phone and calling her and complaining to the ex-wife and saying that now she acknowledging that when your children and my children are brothers and sisters, those are their sisters because you need help. So you think the Christian wife now supposed to help you babysit your children while you go to work. See, wickedness on top of wickedness. These are the wickedness that I am so outspoken about. That's why I preach the way that I preach. All of this stuff that these young women do. And they try to play the victim. Now you know you were sleeping with a married man. You know you were playing the role in pleasing a married man. You was, you was just being a side chick. But you weren't comfortable being a side chick. You wanted to assert the wife. You wanted that man to put his wife out in the streets. You even pull up to the house. And park your car. And was looking at the house. You even told your friends, one day that house going to be mine. And when Richard come around you, you told Richard, put her out. Put her out the house. Get rid of her. Put her out the house. Why you, why you don't fight for divorce? What, you, you tormented Richard. You tormented his wife. You deprive the wife from the sexual affection of her husband and emotional affection. You stole the wife's emotional gratification through God. Because when a man and a woman is married, they become one flesh. But in your words and in your book, you didn't do nothing. In your words, you were innocent. In your def defense, now you playing the victim. You see, Richard's wife was a woman of God. She's still a woman of God. She never played the victim role. She has never played the victim role. But she continued to pray. So when the judge made his decree, the judge declared that the house will go to his wife and the children. Amen. So in the divorce decree, she got the house. The house is hers. So all your effortless, you become effortless. All the wickedness, all the things that you did with Richard, all the wickedness that you said about her all the the harassment and spiritual harassment that you did to her to the wife came to nothing because to the end the wife won the battle you did not win the battle the wife did and the wife ended up with the upper hand against you and your wickedness so today 
you are going through the same thing that you put another woman through. Today, you are suffering the same way. Today, you trying to get him for child support. But you're not getting barely anything. The victimizer has become the victim. Amen? The woman who pursued the married man has become the victim. Sometimes these wicked women will get so angry that they will send somebody to fire bullets and to kill the wife. And many times, these wicked women get very angry. And when they get angry, they go to the extent of criminality. Amen? They go to the extent that they want to take the wife out of the picture. They go to the extent that they will hire a hitman to kill the wife. Amen? Amen. This is what happened when a side chick pushed a man overboard. Suicide. A Cobra County attorney has played a 911 call documenting the moment they say a woman was killed by her husband. The victim was calling for help when she was gunned down. 7 Action News reporter Shelly Childers is here with the emotional reaction in court. Shelly. Yeah, that's right. This call is hard to listen to as Ebony Byram calls first responders for help, saying she and her husband were in an argument and she needs police to help her. Tears in court as a 911 call is played to the public. It's the last moments of Ebony Byram's life. She's heard reaching out for help. It was around 1 a.m. on October 1st, 2016 at this condo in Macomb Township. Police say Ebony is heard telling her husband, Hal Byram, to leave. No, I want you to leave. No, no you want to leave. I'm not leaving. Yeah, you need to leave. No, I'm not. Because I have a child here. On the call, she explains to the dispatcher why she wants her husband gone. We just had a dispute. He wanted to get all his stuff and leave. It was the middle of the night. He could do this another time. In court, Byram sat listening intently as his wife requested police. On the phone, the dispatcher asks about weapons. Any weapons in the home? It is. Just seconds later, as the 911 call continues. But it's not, it, it wasn't in play. There's no threatening anything. The dispatcher is interrupted by gunfire. Ten shots are heard and then silence. Hello? The call brought tears to family in the courtroom. Hal Byram sat quietly, showing little emotion. You hear nine shots, rapid fire, and then less than a half second, a second shot, or the tenth shot, which is he placed the victim's own hand. Byram survived that injury. His wife was hit nine times. She was found dead inside the home. He is charged with first degree premeditated murder. The judge agreed. This is what these women create. If you are so good, if you are so beautiful, if you so talented, why you don't have your own husband? Why you have to go with a married man? You don't know how to say no to the tuggy woogie? You create problems, domestic problems, violence, criminology, and even murder because you can't keep your legs closed and this is the reality this is what happening on a daily basis in our community it is happening too often it is happening on a rampage a lot of these brothers have mental illness from their childhood they've been through trauma and you are the breadwinner. He is not the breadwinner. Or he is the one who providing and cheating all the time. Keep doing the same thing and getting the same results. It's called insanity. So the victim is gone. Because the victimizer is hidden. The consequence of this sin 
that the woman that slept with this married man and had him to murder his wife, more unlikely she broke up with him. More unlikely she said, I don't want you. Don't come back around me. Your wife ain't no good. Your wife is a witch. Go back to your wife. So then he came home and shot his wife 10 times or 9 times. And killed his wife having the, his own child in the house. This is what I'm talking about. This is happening too often in the black community. It's not all black men who love to cheat. But a man cannot cheat by himself. If women learn to say no and have an investigative mind and do her inquiries and follow the signs that I'm saying, something is definitely wrong when a man keep giving you money for sex. Some of them are perverted and their wife refused to do perversion. So they go in the street and find somebody who can do the perversion for them. Amen. Your husband may be suffering from mental illness. Our cameras were there as 30-year-old Austin Smith arrived at jail. He is facing murder, assault, and kidnapping charges in a case that has left neighbors stunned and incredibly saddened. According to court papers, this whole case, so horrific, could be the result of suspected infidelity. Police say Austin Smith was convinced his wife was cheating on him with his own brother. Court documents state he confronted his wife and shot her, telling police he believed God made him do it. Police believe Smith then shot and killed his five-year-old daughter, who he said showed bad behavior. Nearby, neighbors say they heard the gunshots and knew something was wrong. They were all at the same time, right away. So it didn't sound like a normal shooting. It had to be someone was dead. According to police, Smith's seven-year-old daughter witnessed both killings and tried to escape. Officers believe Smith then beat her to death, saying the little girl reminded him of his wife. Despite the sheer horror of this case, neighbors say the family appeared to be peaceful. Never no domestic, nothing, no cops coming all the time, nothing like that. It was just... Like a regular family. A family that is now broken. According to court papers, Smith spared the life of his three-year-old daughter because she reminded him of himself. Neighbors say the little girls often played with chalk in front of their house and that they seemed happy. It's stuck in my head. It really is stuck in my head. Um, they didn't deserve what happened to them. Now, late tonight, Smith did appear before a judge and had two attorneys with him. His bond, by the way, set at $2 million. In the newsroom tonight, Ryan Sims, Arizona's family. Before a judge and had two attorneys with him. His bond, by the way, set at $2 million. In the newsroom tonight, Ryan Sims, Arizona's family. All right, Ryan, thank you. The victim's cousin spoke with our crew earlier today. He says her murder never should have happened, adding she would never cheat on her husband. She's a wife and a mother. That's it. She's not a. She's a, she wasn't committing adultery. Yep. The cousin says the couple's three-year-old girl, who survived by hiding under a bed, will be with his family very soon. We want to show you a map here. As you see, this is happening too often. These husbands go out and cheat, and when they go out and cheat. And the girl is probably 10 years younger than them, 15 years younger, and doing perversion. When you open up yourself for perversion, you just draw like a magnet. You draw all these bad guys. Why are you drawing all these bad men to you? Then you want to play the victim. It's the way your, your, your character is. It's the way your, your, your aura and your spirit present themselves to you. To the, to, the, to, the, to the men. So if you are negative, negative be drawing negative. You're going to continue to draw these type of married men in your life. You're going to continue to draw violent men, broke men, unemployed men, mental illness men. And I always wonder, why would a woman stay with a mentally abusive man, a man that is insane bipolar is because those type of men 
that are mentally ill, they have sexual addictions, and we're going to get into that topic, and they love the toogie woogie. They love the wood. Amen? And we're going to continue with our topic where the, the victimizers and the people who commit murder always play the role of, 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 of the victim. To the end, they started playing the role as a victim, but they are the victimizers. Though they, those are the evil originators of the problems that are happening in the home. Those, when a woman can't say no to a perverted man, when a woman can't say no to any man, any man that approach her, she, and he, he, he pursue me, he asks me, he kept calling me, he kept telling me, no, so then you fall into that trap, amen, you fall into that trap, sometimes the consequence of your sinfulness and the consequence of your behavior may even include your own debt. But you don't created a problem on this earth. And even if the husband murders wife, you also spiritually, you are a murderer. Any woman who sleep with a married man and create problems, she's up underneath a curse. So I'm going to be doing some prayers down the line. For women who have slept with married men to break the soul tie and break the curses. Because it's not a simple prayer you're going to do. You have to really truly repent and go into fasting and praying before the Lord. And I'm going to share this other one with you. Because this one is the tip of the iceberg. Amen. Amen. All right to the news here. You know, first it was the daughter that pleaded guilty to her role the so-called panhandling murder and now dad is up next Jacqueline Smith's husband Keith he is charged with killing his wife and is set to stand trial in January now WMAR 2 News investigative reporter Brian Kubler spoke to his lawyer today about how Valeria's plea affects her dad's pending case um, I was so happy when my father and her got together because um, they fit this was Valeria Smith when we interviewed her just two days after her stepmother's murder last December. She's the nicest woman that you could ever meet in your life. She was just a beautiful person and she didn't deserve for this to happen to her. But yesterday in a Baltimore City courtroom, she told the judge that while Jacqueline Smith didn't deserve it, she helped do it. Valeria Smith copped to being an accessory to the murder of her stepmother after the fact. There was no panhandler, but she helped her father, Keith, fabricate that story by disposing of Jacqueline's purse and the murder weapon, as well as helped her father try to flee to Mexico. But most of those details in Valeria's plea will remain sealed until after her father's trial in January. She's taken full responsibility for that. You know, she's still extremely upset about the entire thing. Um, and she, you know, certainly apologizes to the rest of the family for her role in this. But you can't tell us whether or not she's going to testify against her own father? No. But while her attorney can't answer that question, her father's lawyer says he certainly expects it. So you're fully anticipating she's going to testify against her own father? I, I, you know, I would be surprised if that wasn't part of the plea agreement that they used to twist their arm to plead guilty. Natalie Finnegar is defending Keith Smith. She expects his daughter to be a state's witness. Otherwise, she says, this case is mostly a circumstantial one. But she warns Valeria has had mental health and addiction issues in the past and intends to prove Keith's daughter may be an unreliable witness. There's still some more discovery that's being um, provided to us. We're still doing some more investigations. Um, looking forward to sitting down and having a jury trial with this case. A case set for just about one year after it originally shook Baltimore and the country. The details of this family affair finally beginning to come out in open court. In Baltimore, Brian Kubler, WMAR, 2 News. And this is what is often going on in our community that even mental illness in the women, mental illness in the family and the sins of the father that he passed down to his generation. You see that wicked seed? See, mur don't take murder lightly because God doesn't take murder lightly. And he put us here on this earth to be watchers. If you believe truly, truly if that you have a calling in your life. 
and that you are a true believer and you are the seed of Abraham and you be washed with the blood and that your sins have been forgiven for you then you are part of the watchers you are part of God elects you are a royal priesthood you are a king and a, and a, and a, and a priest here on earth you are sitting in heavenly places you're supposed to be blowing your trumpet watch man watch you must to watch everything that's going on in your community spiritually physically and then speak up about it blow your trumpet blow your trumpet young woman start playing the victim when you are the victimizer you knew he was a married man you knew he was an irresponsible married man what make a man an irresponsible man when he's sit down and talk negativity about his wife that's why so many of you do not have a husband some of you need to repent some of y'all need to be in a fasting program that God gonna start some of y'all need to be reading certain scriptures that God gonna be posting because those sins is in your blood because you mix your blood with a married man if you have slept with more than seven partners whether you are a man or a woman and you have had sex with more than seven people your blood is dirty you have dirty blood like all, all people used to say go buy some red leaf, red leaf clover red clover and drink it as tea go buy ice up and drink it as tea that's what all folks used to say because your blood is dirty so you are transferred not only in the physical your blood that's why people walk around and they hiv positive for years and they don't know because that hiv will be dormant in their blood and they call them carriers but they already have the hiv in their system and they would not clean out their system with the herbs so then they start it go reach to a peak where it's infect, start infecting other people, but they don't have any symptoms. But here in Georgia, there are laws. There are laws, even if you'd never done an HIV test, there are laws and you would pay the consequence because they will still charge you and put you in jail if you infect women unknowingly that you did not know you have HIV and it's not in your medical file, they will still charge you with a crime. Amen? So God has consequence for these type of women and men. There is consequence when a woman and a man sleep together and he is married or he is a fornicator and you are a homemonger, you are not married. Amen? So they don't have one monogamous partner they have multiple partners and they sleep with multiple people and they become predators they go out and scan and fish and they keep doing the same thing day after day year after year till finally they end up murder or they murder somebody or they murder their wife or they kill themselves kill their wife and then kill themselves because these type of men and women, they blame everything on their wife. But it don't have anything to do with their wife. It has to do with the sins of the fathers and the curses in their generation that is passed down from one male to the other male to the other male. And if you look at certain families, you got to look on the father lifestyle and the grandfather lifestyle. And you will see all of the uncles, all of the males cousins all of them live the same lifestyle because the curse coming from the grandfather or the great grandfather they married multiple wives they divorced married divorced married they scatter themselves they have children with multiple women children here seven children here eight children here ten children here they have children everywhere and it create mental illness in the community I've known in a community when I was a young girl that a man father, he had 50 children with different women. And they knew he was no good. They knew he was a janitor, he didn't have nothing. But they still was going to him to get the toogie woogie and they produce all of those children. And those children produce children with themselves, just like in slavery. 
These things are actually happening today. The consequence is some women, because they've done so treacherously, they can't get a husband. They have a spirit husband. They have done so much sexual perversion in their life. That they can't get married. Because they always sleep with a married man and fight the wife. So they constantly fighting the wife. They constantly fighting the wife. They are constantly going from one married man to another married man. And that's why they, they are not married today. Amen. And to close out, I just want to say, Father God, touch each and every one of those that are listening to my words of encouragement from woman to woman. I'm blowing my trumpet. Blow your trumpet too. I warn the young sisters in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. And this is the end of our segment. The victim. Stop playing the victim. The victimizer has become the vic victim. Everything has backfired. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. I defeat you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. I defeat you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. I defeat you, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.